the Joe Rogan experience. And in another case, I saw it was a magpie, one of these birds known for how smart it is. There is a full, uh, uh, you know, half liter, um, you know, plastic uh, thing of water. It was just water, okay? You know, a water bottle. And it was full. So the magpie goes over and sips out the water. Now, you can only, it's, the beak is only, what, an inch and a half long or an inch at most? So it goes in until it can't reach the water anymore. So what does it do? It goes off to the side, gets a rock, just the right size, drops it into the water bottle. It raises the level of the water. Thereby displacing water. Here that, it is. That is heavy. You've got the There it is. And so it, it comes, and it goes back, and it gets another stone, drops it in, and every time it drops it in, the water level rises, and it can drink more water. And it just it keeps doing this. That's pretty amazing. Okay? And so, so every time we study animals, they're smarter than we ever thought they were. So maybe for our own ego, we kept building ourselves up, saying how separate and distinct we are as humans in the animal kingdom, when maybe we're not as separate and distinct as we think we are. So... Now, what, what's my broader point there about, that I was making? I, I just distracted Something myself. Something about UFOs? Yeah, I know. I was trying to get back to UFOs on that. The, th the fact that we have high-resolution cameras in our pocket and we take videos of things that are very unusual. Uh, very, oh, so, exactly. So here's video of a magpie doing Bernoulli experiments on a, on a, on a water, in a water bottle. Who would have known that even happened, right? Right. Okay. You can't bring the bird into a lab and, and, and uh, maybe you could, but I don't know that anyone did. All right. Here's my point. Um, in the 1960s and 70s, there were many, many reports of alien abductions. People said, I, the aliens came to me, and they brought me in, and then they released me. Do you have any footage? No, they took my camera. Or no, they zapped my, my film, and now there's no image on the film. But there were countless stories. Well, now you can stream live from your camera anything that's going on in front of you. So if the aliens come and they want to abduct you, stream it. That would be instantly viral. Oh, my gosh. You know, the stuff that goes viral is much less than that. A cat, that, a kitten that jumps to the table and falls, that goes viral? You don't think a video footage of an alien is not going to go viral instantly? But there's none. So I'm just saying, I'm thinking, if we were being visited, somebody would have some good footage. If we were being visited, I'm thinking maybe Google satellite images would catch sp spaceships that are not airplanes moving on our surface. If we were being visited, uh, I'm thinking we'd have something better than fuzzy monochromatic video of, of, of objects that apparently reveal themselves only to Navy pilots, right? So well, that one of the reasons is most of these sightings actually occur far offshore in the ocean. And the speculation is this is one of the ways, no, obviously I'm going to put my tinfoil hat on nice and tight. Do your thing. This is one of the ways that they monitor us. The best way to do it is to do it where they're, hold their base where no one is around, which is the ocean. No, that's so not true. So they go in the ocean, they pop up, and they fly out. It's not true. What do you mean it's not true? It's not true. Yeah, what, nobody what lives it? on the ocean. Yes, that's correct. In the but ocean. But have you, have you or, well, so, oh, oh, it leaves lives down under sea. This is what the speculation is. Oh, okay, is. it lives down that's under sea. That's why these transmedium devices have been, Okay. these transmedium crafts have been observed. If you want, if you are sure we are being visited by I'm aliens, definitely not sure. and you don't actually have really good evidence, then you have to say that. Sure. Well, you know that. You have to say that. You have to say, this is really happening, and they're observing us, and they're concealing themselves in this particular way. You have to say that. And so right. that, that's, the, that's sort of, that's your way to maintain your, 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 your alien belief system, by saying that. And I don't have a problem with it. Go get them. Mm -hmm. Go get them. But all of what has been put forth as evidence for aliens, to me, is insufficient evidence to excite my interest, my research interest, in devoting time to finding it out. But it definitely has excited other people. I have not stopped them. I am not saying defund the military uh, program on UAPs, which of course is just 
updated UFO. Right? I know they like to say that now yeah, because there's that's, like a stigma to no, UFO. Yeah, I know that's just that that's a really transparent Sne- sneaky way. Of no, doing no, it. it's not even sneaky. It's actually I think it's embarrassing. It's like maybe if we call them UAPs, people take them seriously. People will take them seriously. No, it's just I'm of the belief that they're probably akin to what we did on Mars. I don't think there's aliens in them. I have a feeling that these things are probes. And I feel like if you just think about biological entities flying through the universe, like why do that? Right. When you have sophisticated technology that's good enough right now from our like relatively primitive in consideration of what we think is possible a million years from now, right? Mm-hmm. But we can send that Mars rover around. We have a helicopter on Mars. Mm-hmm. I mean, there's multiple satellites flying through the universe right now taking images. We we can do all that. Yeah, but why our, our we... probes are not targeting the Martian military fighter pilots. Because there's no Martian military. <laughs> but if there were, we They're certainly just would. just sitting out in the open. Right, but if we had something like, are you familiar with um, one of the most famous cases was a case with uh, Commander David Fravor of the Navy who uh, encountered with one or two other jets off of the Nimitz, they encountered this thing that was shaped like a Tic Tac. Yeah, mm-hmm. you, you know the Everybody story. Everybody knows this. Yeah, this story. It went from they tracked it going from eighty thousand feet above sea level to fifty in less than a second. They have no idea how it moved. There's no visible propulsion system. Mm-hmm. It was tr- blocking their radar. It was actively blocking tracking. This is what their sensors is, yes, told them. Exactly. Just be clear about that. And then you, it, you're, you're stating. Information as though it is facts. I'm stating information as Commander Fraser related. I don't care. Related. That doesn't matter. He's human. Right. And we're all human here. But, but as a scientist, saying. when you're presenting information, you don't say this thing was at eighty thousand feet and it dropped to zero to sea level in one second or whatever it was the the yes. measure. That's that's the wrong way to report it. What you okay. say is we have sensors uh-huh. that told us this is what happened. I understand what you're saying. Okay. Yeah. That's a very important distinction yes and so so now all right your first question then tell me about the sensors yeah okay are, are they double checked are they you know and so so but if you're just gonna say there's this craft at 80,000 then then you everyone is thinking about a craft and no one is thinking about the sensor they actually saw it with their eyes too this is something that they actually got. You can't see something at 80,000 feet. No, the va- the actual visual on the craft. Okay. They didn't see it at 80,000 feet, but this craft, it's not just something that was tracked with equipment. Got it, but they didn't see it at 80,000 feet. Right. That's my point. So, so uh, by the way, this level of, that, uh, that of, of attention I'm giving to the detail and the reporting of information, we do that with fellow scientists for much less. Oh, for sure. Than... If we're being visited by intelligent aliens from another planet, go visit it. Go go to a scientific conference and watch the level of scrutiny we put on other people's work. If they have a sensor that has a new result, we'll say, "Did you calibrate the sensor? Did you? How long has the sensor been in use?" What? I, I, I'll give you an example. Here's an example. Okay. Um, do you remember Planet X? Yes. The search for Planet X. Nibiru. Uh, that was one, uh, there was, sorry, there were several incarnations of Planet X. Right. That was among them. Okay? That, that was well, the, I'm, the I'm most talking wacky. About, I'm talking about uh, 100 years ago, Planet X. Okay? Yes. Oh, uh, there, 100 years ago? Well, there are several about? Planet Xs, right? So okay. um, Uranus was moving weirdly. Nobody understood. Maybe mm-hmm. there's a planet beyond it whose right. gravity we have yet to reckon in our equations. Oh, boom. We discover Neptune. Wait a minute, Neptune is moving a little, a little uh, unfamiliarly. That's why well, my phone is, sorry about that. You're going to drop that thing and break it with no <laughs> case on? <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, yeah, this, uh, I got the 12, and yeah, I can still do this. I'm just sorry. Yeah, it's I not get dropping. it. Last time you were here, you had a broken case. <laughs> You're a broken back. Remember? <laughs> so, uh, why are you distracting me? Like sorry, that? I, sorry. I, I was like on a roll. Um, and Neptune. Neptune. So, so Neptune. Gravity. We're looking at Neptune's orbit, and it's not following Newton's laws. And this is odd. Well, we've been down that road before. Uranus didn't follow Newton's laws. We proposed another planet, and we found it. So Neptune's not following all the laws of gravity that from all the other planets in the sun. There must be another planet out there, a planet X. Let's look for it. Is that Bode's law? Bode's law is a is a 
fitting function that gets you it it, it got a little more attention than it deserved mm. it's just that planets um, every next planet is about twice as far away from the sun as the previous one so you just make a quick equation out of that and, oh that's it but, but it doesn't work for Mercury and it didn't work oh. for Pluto and I thought it was based on the mass of the planet. No, not at all. <clears throat> no. Mass has nothing to do nothing with it. Nothing to do with it. And it predicted the asteroid belt, but the asteroid belt there's no planet there. Right. Okay. And if you add, if you glue together all the pieces of the asteroid belt, you get something like five percent the mass of the moon. So yeah, it gave us the location of the asteroid belt, but that's not a planet. So Bode's law, it's fun to play with, but you know there are limits to how far you want to uh, declare its relevance to the actual universe. So we're out here in Neptune, and so it's, so I said, maybe there's a planet X. Everybody started looking. Everybody started looking, including Percival Lowell, all right, back in the 1920s. And he says, I want to find planet X because something's perturbing Neptune. So he sets out looking for it, and he doesn't find it. Then he hires Clyde Tombaugh, and he dies, so he doesn't see the results of this. Clyde Tombaugh, he said, I can't find it either. I will just systematically search everywhere. Because if you think something's affecting you gravitationally, you ought to have some idea where it is to be tugging on you in that way. All right? That's not, a, that's not some kind of weird it's, – it's like you're moving differently. Where must the thing be to tug on you so that you're moving in that way? Right. No one could find such a planet X. So Klein Tombo said, it's got to be out there somewhere. I will systematically image the entire sky. All right? And you got to do it on multiple nights because if something's moving, you'd see it change from one picture to an X. He does this, discovers Pluto. Was Pluto where Planet X was supposed to have been? No. Was Pluto the mass that Planet X should have been? Everyone assumed it was. But over the decades, the mass of Pluto got lower and lower and lower as our estimates got more and more accurate. And then we found out that Pluto is, is one-fifth the mass of our moon, made of half ice, and this is why Pluto got into trouble later in the in, mm. in the twentieth century. It's not it's not because we had some vendetta against Pluto. Pluto just never belonged in that list to begin with. That's really how you need to think about it. Anyhow, there's still the matter of Neptune's orbit. Pluto did not have enough mass to make those changes, so the search for Planet X continued. So what happens? All right, uh, 1993. A colleague of mine named Miles Standish, okay? I, he's probably related to the Miles Standish on the Mayflower. He is an astrophysicist, looked at all of the data people were using to say Neptune's orbit was crooked. Looked at all the data. Then he found out that at one particular observatory, was it the gearbox or the timing mechanism, had just been cleaned or swapped out, or there was some... Because in, when, in the observing log, you write down everything because you just don't know. Okay, was there a glitch in the current? Was there a bird flyover? You make notes of everything. One of the observatories whose data was being grafted together with the other observatories had this sort of gearbox. I don't remember if it was a gearbox. There was some mechanical adjustment that was made. He said, I wonder if that had an effect on the positioning of this telescope. He removed those data from his analysis and fitted data to all the other telescopes that he had for the positions of Uranus, of, of, of Neptune. When he did that, Planet X evaporated in that instant. Mm. In that instant. There was no Planet X. All the other data, when he connects across, removing the data fr from the one where the observing log said they did something different, uh, uh, Neptune fell right on to Newton's laws. And so, so since 1993, there is no Planet X. And Pluto, and, and were it not for that, we probably would have been a long time before we discovered Pluto because no one would have looked for it. They found another, like, Pluto. Let me just finish the, what, the, the lesson there. Okay. The lesson there is you have information that you think is correct from your sensors. This was an observatory, a, fi a fine observatory. And you're going to say, this observatory says Neptune is misbehaving. But then you learned there was something wrong with the data. You throw it out. So, uh, so I'm just I'm trying to say this happens all the time in, in science. You have to be careful 
what you're analyzing before you declare that what the thing measured is true and then realign all your resources to address what you think is true mm. when it might have just simply been a glitch or multiple glitches or, or anything. And, and we do this all the time in science. Catch new episodes of the Joe Rogan Experience for free only on Spotify. Watch back catalog JRE videos on Spotify, including clips. Easily, seamlessly switch between video and audio experience. On Spotify, you can listen to the JRE in the background while using other apps and can download episodes to save on data cost all for free. Spotify is absolutely free. You don't have to have a premium account to watch new JRE episodes. You just need to search for the JRE on your Spotify app. Go to Spotify now to get this full episode of the Joe Rogan Experience.